Hello, good morning and welcome to this morning's webinar. Thank you all for joining us and a very warm welcome for me for this webinar. Is it really possible to manage design data in the cloud? Well, I can tell you now the answer is yes. So there we go, webinar over. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, no, 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 in all seriousness, welcome to the webinar. Of course, we are using Zoom as always, and I'm sure you're all very used to it uh, by now. But uh, of course, just as a quick reminder, we've had the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. If you have any questions while we go through the presentation this morning, please use the Q&A box and we'll either try and answer them live as we go along or, or, or answer them uh, on, on the, uh, the Q&A session there as well. So welcome. So just as a quick introduction, my name is Simon Brand. I'm the sales manager here for the manufacturing division at Man & Machine. Uh, I've been here a long, long time and a personal passion of mine is managing data. It's not the most exciting topic, but uh, hopefully we're going to bring a bit of excitement to it this morning. Uh, so thank you. I'm joined by my colleague Cameron McKenzie. He's going to be taking you through the actual presentation and showing you a bit more detail about this presentation. So, of course, you can manage your data in the cloud and Autodesk have a, a variety of uh, options to, to, to do that. And I know a number of our customers in recent uh, months and years have wanted to move their server environment to a cloud based environment. But something that we wanted to present to you this morning is the topic of Fusion. Now, Fusion, for those of you that know or for those of you that have joined us on our, on our previous uh, series of webinars, is a really exciting uh, platform from Autodesk that brings through all things from, from CAD design to simulation to generative design or additive manufacturing all into one platform in a single, in single environment for that user. It's something that Autodesk have been developing for the last five, six, seven years, and it's really now, we think, come, coming of age and becoming a program that is worth investigating. But of course, as more and more businesses look to investigate uh, Fusion and implement it in their, in, their, in their organizations, the idea of being able to manage the designed data and how that flows through the organization is, is really critical to how uh, the, the adoption being successful. So that's what we wanted to focus on today. Of course, if you've missed any of our previous Fusion webinars, the, the Fusion one we did, the, the generative design or the additive manufacturing one, they are all available on our YouTube channel. Uh, so please go and subscribe to our YouTube channel and, and like the videos that, uh, uh, that, you, that you like. It really helps us to know what to uh, bring to you next time. And this one, of course, will be on uh, YouTube uh, very shortly. So Fusion is a real platform. Fusion 360 is a platform that gives you the ability to design, manufacture and, and manage your data as well as simulate and, and really explore ideas in a really simple form, a really simple environment, as well as being able to collaborate internally or externally with your clients. It's, it's a real innovation, as well as the way that it's packaged is a real innovation. Um, and we're really excited about the way that uh, Autodesk have packaged up Fusion because it brings it to a, to a completely new, uh, new, new class of people. And to explain that, what it actually does, how it actually works, is that if you think about traditional uh, CAD tools or traditional environments for CAD or CAM or PCB design or visualization or simulation, traditionally businesses would have to uh, justify the cost, uh, the training, nominate the individual to go through that training, and, and of course the hardware that goes along with it in all of these separate things. Now, what we've noticed in recent years is that more and more often companies are trying to do more with, with, with less, less resource, less money. And of course, that means that uh, the engineer becomes, you know, multiple hats, you know, having to do CAD design, PCB design, simulate, visualize all in one package. And traditionally, that might mean five or six different CAD tools, five or six different tools to be able to do that job, which for the actual user becomes really tricky to manage the, the integration between these tools, as well as remembering if it's something, of course, you only do once in a blue moon, remembering how to use the tool. So Fusion really flips that on, on its head and gives you a single environment to, to be able to, to navigate and know how to use, you know, because it all looks completely the same. And it's all done at a complete, you know, in a, in a subscription form at a relatively affordable cost, if you consider uh, the alternatives. But it also brings um, all manner of other things, as well as managing the data. 
Now, what Fusion does as a, as a single environment is gives that user a, a cloud-based environment to store their data. Now, what we're going to explore today is how companies might want to expand that to the entire organization. So what they've added uh, more recently is consumption, what they call extensions. Now, extensions for manage or machining or generative design or additive, and there's a few more coming uh, shortly. Uh, you can either consume them on a, on a pay-as-you-go basis, you buy a, a number of credits and then you consume them as and when you need them, or you subscribe to them on a yearly basis. Now, for an organization that might have five or six CAD seats, being able to manage the data and really streamline the business uh, is, is really critical. And that's what we're going to explore today is the manage extension, which is in addition to, to Fusion. Now, we as Man and Machine, of course, we are here to, to help our customers to adopt technology, to explore it, to uh, understand how to use it and to, and to support it going forward. And we do a, a variety of services here at Man and Machine across the UK, uh, from support to training to implementation and deployment. Uh, so if you're interested in, in what we can offer and exploring what we can do with Fusion, please get in touch with me. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my colleague Cameron. So Cameron McKenzie has been uh, our Fusion specialist and has been uh, presenting all of the other webinars that we've done on Fusion around uh, generative design or additive manufacturing. And he's going to be taking you through. We're not actually using the motorbike on this one, but I've used the same slides, Cameron. Uh, we're going to be exploring how you can manage the solar system. So let me welcome to the test of the stage Cameron McKenzie and thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you, Simon. Um, morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. So, yeah, as Simon um, has explained this morning, really, in, in a great way, is the ability that we have now within Fusion, uh, within the Fusion Manage extension, to be able to manage our data. Um, and this is including life cycles and change orders. So we've got the ability now with, with the extension itself to, to further add to the, to the benefits that we get inside of Fusion um, and really have some some really good justification for for the the entire product um, and adding this to to essentially the the entire life cycle of our products now as well uh, so yeah today we're just going to have a, a fairly quick look at um, all of the the features that are available throughout the extension um, and what fusion is is adding to or the, what the fusion team are adding to the product itself the first thing I want to take a look at today is the ability for, for people to sort of reserve their files. Um, a lot of people, if, if you are used to other platforms like Vault, um, you've got the ability to check a file out. Uh, and that file is reserved to the user so that any changes they make to that uh, won't be, um, or any other users essentially won't be able to, to make changes to the file when one person has it. So it's, it's reserved to an individual. They can make any changes they need to. And as soon as they're ready with those changes, those changes are then published uh, to a central database where everybody can kind of use that from. Uh, if you are used to working with teams inside of Fusion already, you'll probably have started noticing little icons appear next to your files. Uh, so we can see in this assembly that I have available to me here, I've got a little R next to this, the, uh, the model of Mercury here. And that's just to signify that one of my colleagues has this, this particular file open. If I have a look at Mercury in the side over here, we'll see I can hover over there and at the top of the file name itself, I've got the same uh, button, the same icon, just showing that that one of my colleagues has this open and Mercury has been grayed out. So the, this particular one is being edited actively by one of my colleagues, um, and we can we'll notice that as well with the little um, little icon just below the R with the little white dot that that signifies that this current this item is currently being edited. So if I had to come in at any point and try and make any edits to this, uh, there's not that much to edit on this particular one. But if I had to try edit this one you can see that the changes can't be, um, won't be savable. So anything I change now, because one of my colleagues is actually using this one and editing it, I'm getting a notification here to, to let me know that. So I'll just cancel out on this one. Um, and the same thing is essentially will happen if I open the file. Uh, so if I go over to Mars over here, and if I had to start editing the file, you will start to notice that my icon also just appears in there. So my initial appears in the file name itself and the little icon just next to it shows that it's I'm actively editing the file. So this will update continuously. And as soon as anybody completes the um, 
the edit of the file itself, we'll get a little icon, uh, which will be very similar to, to one that you, you'd be used to with inside of assemblies, a little update or local update icon, just showing you that you've got a, a newer version that's available for use. So that's that's essentially the, the working as a team, being able to, to share the data, work in the same file at the same time, essentially, um, as soon as you've obviously got the changes that have been um, saved and, and ready to, to upload, you essentially just finish what you need to do, save it, and that update will then be pushed to, to all of your colleagues that may either have the file open at the time or for when they, re when they reopen the file at a later point, they'll be able to see those, those changes um, live essentially with us working in the cloud. Obviously all of the, the data is always in the central database and it's just uploading newer versions of those to there. Now with the data management extension, we've got a few uh, new features that are available to us. Uh, we've got the ability to now manage life cycles and change orders, as well as a new view that's available to us for, for managing all of these in, in one single location. The first area I want to kind of show you today is with the manage extension, we've got a new manage tab inside of the design workspace. So I'm currently in the design workspace for this particular part. And you can see we've got a, a manage tab that's now available to us. And inside of this manage tab, we've got the ability to assign an item number to our part. And this item number will then be able to get referenced later on um, throughout the, the product's life cycle itself. So if I had to come in here and assign an item number, it wants me to save the file first, so I'll just save it here quickly. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. And essentially, it's just going to run through that save now quickly. And then as soon as it's run through that save, it'll pop up with a window, which will allow us to then assign a item number to the part. So what this will do is if you are using an assembly, it'll look through multiple parts and assign item numbers to them individually. In this case, we just got the one part over here. The item number is currently blank so it will be assigning that there so if as soon as i hit submit um, you, you can obviously select or deselect individual parts as well as soon as i hit submit it'll then run through my database as to the item numbers that i currently have in in place and it'll then assign on the next available item number so you can see here we've got part number 12. So once that's been done i can hit close and this item or this part has been assigned an item number we can have a look at this inside of the properties. So where we usually find the properties right in, inside of the part itself, just by right clicking on here and going into properties, you'll see we've got a few extra properties that are available again within the manage extension. So under the manage section, we've now got an item number that's assigned to it. We've got a life cycle that's assigned to it and we've got a state that's currently assigned as well as revisions and the change order that this particular part is assigned to. So this is again an addition inside of the manage extension. If I close this off here quickly, I'll show you how we can we can push it through different life cycles and change orders as well. So as well as the assign button or the assign item number button inside of the release panel, we've got the ability to release our part into either a change order or do a quick release, which will skip the change order, but is essentially push it through one of the life cycles. So if I just use a quick release for now, you'll see how this picks that up. Same part, it's just inside of the manage panel. Let this load a little bit. And you can see it's picking up that exact same item number and it's picking up which life cycle it's currently in. As soon as I hit submit over here, it will then change the revision for us in here. And again, these are all customizable, which I'll talk us through in, in a few minutes as well. So you can see, Fairly quickly, it obviously just needs to do a, a quick synchronization. So we pushed this one up directly to revision one. And instead of it being in, in unreleased, it's now in pre-production as the life cycle. So I can close this off. And that's a case of, of um, changing that from here. We can then go and do um, further quick releases. Otherwise, if I open up one of my other files quickly, I just want to make sure it's one that I haven't uh, changed before. Let's just see if we've got satin available here. If I close the data panel quickly, again, just notice how that icon has now changed and it's added my initial to there just to show that I have this file currently open. 
Um, again, inside of the manage panel, I'm just going to use a release with change order. And this will now look through the file, um, all the information. If the, if the file itself doesn't already have an item number, it'll be assigning an item number. You can see it doesn't currently have an item number, nor does it have a life cycle or revision assigned to it. So for this particular one, I can now come in and create a change order. So it's, it's going to go through the exact same process, except this time it's going to need a change order in, inside of the uh, lifecycle transition as well. So as soon as I hit create change order or create CO, it's going to come in, create an item number, create a revision, and should assign a lifecycle to it as well. What we can then do is we can add a, we, we then come into the release page over here, which essentially allows us to manage the change order that, that's currently being created. So I'm going to call this um, this change order initial release. We can then select who we'd like to approve in this entire change order. And this will basically pick up anybody that's inside of your team that has the administration rights and obviously a license of manage. So it's either myself or my colleague, Robin. I'll just pick myself for this demonstration. Obviously, in this case, you wouldn't really be picking yourself to approve these. You'd be using your colleagues to approve these. Uh, we've also got the ability to choose a reason for change. And we've got some standard ones inside here. And we've also got other where we can add further notes if we wanted to. Uh, for this one, I'm just gonna say initial release as well. We could come in here and add any notes or any description to this particular change order if we wanted to, as well as setting a priority, whether it be low, medium, or high. Further down in the list, we've got the team. So currently the, the members that are in the team again, and who would be the reviewers and who would be, um, who it would need to be reviewed by essentially. So we can come in and, and name these inside here. Again, I'm just gonna pick myself up for the demonstration purposes, but we could come in and add a few others as well. Once you've got the change order set up, uh, the next thing we need to do is just save this and it will then transition into that particular change order then. We could then, if we wanted to manage the change order in here, if you are one of the approvers, in this case, I am. So I could come in and change here which life cycle I want to assign this to, whether I want to um, assign it to the release to production or just the release life cycle. I can come in if I'm doing multiple ones, I can come in and check the individual ones on the side with it being only one. Uh, obviously, we're only going to be editing the one at, at a time. Um, what you'll notice, I'll, I'll show you the rest of this workflow um, in one of the other windows, but just so you can see, we if we had any due dates, we could come in, add them in here, um, just by hitting the add button over here, just so that it adds a bit more urgency to it. Uh, we've got an approval workflow, which allows us to start off with the, the uh, change order is currently open. We could then cancel the change. We could either submit it to work, we could submit it to review or fast track to review. And then we could also fast track to approval. So we've got an entire change order process that we can take hold of. And this is all built into Fusion as well. So we've got the ability to, to make hold of any of these processes. And you can see the different routes that each of those can take. And it's a really, it's really well laid out um, and, and visually, um, yeah, visually simple. So, so anybody can kind of pick it up without knowing that the, the um, knowing too much about the um, the company's workflows themselves. I'm just going to cancel out of this one quickly and show you the same window in another section. So I did say earlier um, that we've got a new area inside of Fusion that's now available as part of the manage extension. Um, and that's this little home button over here on the left, on the far left of all of your tabs. Um, so we've got this view that's now available to us where we can see various uh, areas and, and different ways of viewing our files. So we've got a recent data section, we've got a project section, which will have all of the current projects and allows us to kind of view all of our files at a glance. So if I come into my planets project over here, you can see all of the files that are available to me here. I can also see project members. So if I wanted to add or remove any project members or invite any new project members, I could do so from in here. And I could also change what their roles are within the team. If I go to the content section over here, we could view individual files. 
And this is essentially giving us an overview of the properties of the file, as well as a few extra options. So if this file is used, has any uses, so if it therefore has any children inside of the file, they would all appear inside of this uses section. Uh, to show that off, I will quickly go back to planets and show you the solar system over here. And you can see inside of the uses, it will give me a list of all of the files that are inside of it, so all of its children. And then the same is the case inside of the used in, except it's the other way around. If this particular file had any parents, including drawings, um, where and which files are related to it. So again, back inside of Saturn, if I go to the used in, you can see it's currently used in the solar system and vice versa. If it had any drawings, we could view the drawings from inside here. So it's a very, really, um, very easy way of, of viewing the entire product without, or your entire project rather, um, without needing to go and open up the files individually. So you've got a good overview of that. Um, you've also got the ability to come in here and view the files themselves, or view the model rather. It'll just load up a visualization of the model so you can quickly view this without actually, again, having to go into the file and opening it. Um, you've got the ability to do that. We've got the ability to pan around. Um, those that are used to the, the visualization files will be, will be used to this type of a view. Um, and we've also got the ability to add in notes or comments as well. So if, if we want to add any notes, um, any changes that needed to happen to this, we could add them in here as well. And that will be viewable by anybody who has access to this file. Um, to show that, I will quickly go back to one of the other ones. I believe it was Earth that had some notes. You can see the, the notes over here in the side added by myself, but if any of the other users had access to that and added notes, you could view them inside here. So that's the, the project section. Uh, with the manage extension, we've also got the ability to handle the processes. So this is where we can handle the change orders and the life cycles themselves. So inside of processes, this is where I will be able to view um, any of the processes that are required for, for my workflow. So anything that, that's, that is brought to my attention can be viewed in this section over here. So you can see we've got an outstanding work section. So these are all the change orders I either need to approve or move across into, into their uh, respective life cycles. At the top, I've got charts, which will show me all of the change orders um, by reason for change. And you can see we've got a, a pie chart over here, um, as well as a few other graphs that are available to us. This is again, all customizable. So if we had to come into the more options here, pick, picking those three dots, we could come in and add any further charts that we wanted to as well. So we could toggle these on or off um, and just customizing our view just to show what we need to see uh, at, the, at each given time. A little further down, we've also got bookmarks. So if you ever wanted to bookmark certain files, they could come in here, or we could see any of the files that we've recently viewed and go straight back into those from here. Um, so directly from this list, we could essentially come in and pick any of the items from the list itself. And this would be any of the change orders themselves. You can see each of these items have been given a change order number as well. So if I have a look at the initial release, which is the one I uh, just pushed through to change order earlier. If I click on there, it'll take me to that exact same window that I showed you earlier, uh, except this time it's just inside of the process section of the home screen. Uh, so I can go and view those exact same ones from within here. I've got my part number in here or my item number. Um, I've got the due dates. I've got the approval workflow, any attachments that are included in here. And there's a change log so you can see exactly how this particular item has gone through its, its life cycle up until now. So if I quickly go back to the affected items, um, I just want to select this one and I can come in and edit this particular item. I can then come in and assign it to a particular life cycle. In this case, I'm going to push it to the release life cycle and I'm going to save this change from within here. Just adding that to a, a life cycle itself. And with the approval workflow, I can just come into the approval and say, you know what, I've, I've viewed the file. Um, I'm happy with where it needs to be. So I'm going to push it right up to approved. I'm going to fast track the approval. Um, I can add any notes over here and hit approve. And those will all then be added to, to the change log itself. So if we come back to the change log, you can see the edit item has, has occurred in here, as well as the fast track approval. 
uh, month completed, year completed, and time completed. So you've got a lot of information that can be driven from, from within there as well. The last section I, I want to show you is a bit more of the, the management side of this. So we've got obviously the ability to pick different life cycles on then, and I'm sure you're wondering how we can manage which life cycles are occur within your within your data management process. Um, we've got the ability to, to edit some of that inside of Fusion itself. Um, so if we've got, if we go into our little hamburger menu up at the top here, we've got an administration section um, and inside there we can change some of the system configuration. I personally prefer viewing this inside of a browser and it is possible to view this inside of the browser. Um, so I'm just going to open that up inside of I'm just using Edge here, but it will be available in, in, in any of the other browsers as well. Um, and you can see it's it's pretty much the exact same process that we or the, the exact same window we've got available in here. Um, and this will usually just have the um, the team name followed by Autodesk PLM 360.net. So if you just view your your team name inside of Fusion, you can then access that directly in here using your login. Um, so if we had to come in here and go through the exact same process, if we open the hamburger menu here, go to the administration tools and go to system configuration. Inside of the system configuration, there are various items or various processes we can control inside of, of Fusion and the lifecycle management itself. So we can come inside of the lifecycle editor here, which is what I'll show you today. We've got a few other things we can change, but just for today, we'll change the lifecycle editor. And you can see the different life cycles and um, transitions that are available to us inside of, of Fusion. So these are all of the default ones that are available here. I've, I've outlined them all and, and just set them up. Um, and we can essentially come in and move any of these or remove any of these as and when we want to. Uh, so if you didn't want to have a pre-production, so you saw earlier we had the uh, release process. So our previous file went from unreleased to released. Um, so it would then be into the active state. Uh, we've got various other transitions that we can take hold of. Um, if we wanted to remove or edit any of these, we could do so quite easily. So all of these are movable um, just for the sake of, of neatening up the, the view and making it a little bit more comprehensible, I suppose, um, just to understand how the entire life cycle itself works. Um, yeah, very um, visually appealing and, and, and easy to understand when you when you see it all laid out like this. So if we wanted to remove a particular life cycle, we could do so just by right clicking on here and selecting delete. If I delete that now, it doesn't completely delete it. It still keeps that life cycle in the background. So we've got a show and hide deleted. And this will show us all of the life cycles that have been deleted as well as the transitions. So if any of those transitions that were related to it have then been removed as well, because the, the life cycle itself has been removed, those will all be added back into the deleted section over here as well. And we could kind of move in and, and move these around um, just to neaten up the view a bit more. And you can see how just adding and removing particular states essentially inside of Fusion um, is, is really easy. And we can kind of bring those in and, and customize this as much as possible. We've also got the ability to add our own life cycles. So if I hit the add button over here, we can give the life cycle a name. Um, we can type in any name we want to for that particular life cycle um, and toggle its e effectivity as well. I'm just gonna cancel off of this. And that would essentially just add a new block over here. Um, and then to bring in a transition to this particular item, you, the, only, the, the, the main way to do that is just to, um, on the side of each of these uh, life cycle blocks, if we just hover over there, we can then connect these ones to existing life cycle states. That, to add a transition, it's just by clicking to the right and then dragging that to the next available or the next point that you want to have your, um, your life cycle go to essentially. Um, in this, we can give the transition a name we can specify whether it's now an obsolete transition. So whether it then forces the file to be obsolete, whether we want to increment the version or if we want to increment the release. So that can all be done inside here. And then the workspace that this is mapping to um, is just the change orders currently, which is the only one I have set up on my side. If we wanted to re 
introduce a lifecycle um, to our entire lifecycle editor or our lifecycle process, we can just select any one of the ones that we've got inside of our, our list over here and just select undelete and it'll put it back to where it was previously. So if I move this one down, you can see our released one is there. Um, we've got the ability to kind of add any of the transitions in as well at any point. So if we wanted to reintroduce our archive uh, transition, we can just undelete that as well and it'll place that in there. So allowing us to go from unreleased to released and then to archive. And again, this is all customizable. I've put all of the, the default ones up here and most of the time you obviously wouldn't have all of these in, you'd have your own custom setup. So it's, con it's completely configurable. Um, but there also are a lot of very handy um, and very useful basic ones that are already pre-installed as part of the uh, PLM integration. Awesome. So um, I hope that's, that's been great for you. So that's that's a quick overview of, of the, the Fusion Manage extension, um, both the, the management and the workflow of that. Um, and yeah, I hope that's been beneficial for you. I'm going to hand back over to Simon, but uh, have a great day further. Wow. Thank you, Cameron. What an awesome presentation. And thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, I said at the start of this presentation that uh, managing data was, uh, was not the most exciting topic, but hopefully you think that uh, Cameron certainly made it a little bit more interesting. But it is really great and really interesting to see what Autodesk are doing with Fusion. And I really think that with the extensions, with the manage extensions specifically, it really takes Fusion from a, a hobbyist, a sort of you know, play around with CAD tool to really a a business tool that uh, your organization hopefully can get some benefit from, especially with the workflows and the integration of, uh, of managing the life cycles. It's really fascinating. Now, we've had several questions while Cameron was presenting, all mainly quite specific questions about, uh, about your own individual uh, workflows and your life cycles and what's possible. Obviously, they're quite specific, so we'll probably uh, take them offline and come back to you individually. Uh, of course, worth mentioning that, yes, it's January. Autodesk right now have a, a, a discount on Fusion uh, and also all of the extensions. There's quite a, a large discount if you're interested in, in, in acquiring any either Fusion licenses or any of the extension worth getting in touch with your uh, account manager in uh, in the month of January. Uh, as well as that, we're also planning, we have a, 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 a training course for fusion modeling, which is a three day course, which is planned for uh, March time. So if you have any users of fusion that uh, need to get uh, skilled up on how to actually use the tool, please get in touch with either myself or your man and machine account manager. But without further ado, I'll uh, thank you for your time and leave you all to it. And hopefully you can join us for the next one. This webinar will be on our YouTube channel. If you like this, uh, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel and uh, look out for the next one. Thank you very much for your time.